Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today I bring you, what if Deku had an abomination quirk? Izuku Midoriya has been bullied since preschool for being quirkless. After all, the doctor's report showed an extra toe joint. Bakugu doesn't join in. After all, a quirkless person doesn't have four tentacles that can liquefy and devour a grown man in seconds growing out of his back. The story is called The Abomination Quirk, a crossover between My Hero Academia X Prototype. The link of both the story and the author will be in the description down below. If you guys want more What If videos such as these, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Chapter 1 The Beginning Izuku panicked when the sludge thing entered his lungs. He couldn't breathe, he couldn't breathe a heckled breathe, did he even need to breathe? And like that, the pain for air stopped. Ha! He stopped struggling. The monster stated. Izuku proceeded to lock his body in place. What the? Move damn it! The thing yelled. Izuku proceeded to try something new. He began to shrink his lungs. This lead to many surprised curses. And then. Texas smash. The villain disintegrated around him. Izuku looked up and all. Might? He thought before he passed out. Hey! Hey! He Izuku woke up to the feeling of someone slapping his cheeks. Are you alright? He looked up and. All might? He screamed, backing up quickly. Sorry for dragging you into that fight my boy. He shouted. T the number one pro hero all might. Izuku's brain was stuck on that. Autograph. Need to find something for him to sign. Notebook, he opened to a blank page only to find he already did, he mentally shouted. Thank you thank you thank you. He shouted, bowing so fast he was a blur. Okay. All Might said. Now then, I'll take this villain to the police. A already? Izuku asked. Pro heroes are always needed. Therefore I must go. Wait. Wait. I still have questions. Izuku screamed. See you. All Might shouted, before leaping into the sky. That's weird. I feel a weight on my legs. All Might thought to himself. Turning around he saw that kid holding onto his leg. Hey 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 hey. You're insane you hear me. Let go now. He shouted, trying to pry Izuku off. Boo but if I do I'll die. Izuku responded. He actually wasn't sure if he would. It was a possibility though. Oh. Right. All Might said. T there's so much I double you want to ask you about. Izuku shouted. Okay, okay. Just close your eyes and mouth. He shouted. Izuku did so. He patted the boy on the back and then he coughed. Shit he thought to himself. Meanwhile Izuku was wondering where the scent of blood came from. They landed on an apartment building on the other side of town. T that was terrifying. Izuku wheezed out, trying to regain control of his legs. Good grief. The people in the building will be able to help you down. The pro hero said, calmly but in a stern tone. W8. Izuku called. No. I shall not. The pro shouted, obviously preparing to fight another villain. I is it possible to become a hero without a quirk? Izuku shouted at the top of his lungs. W without a quirk? All Might asked, as if he had to think deeply about that. And then All Might felt it. Oh no. Not here. Not now, he coughed hard. And then the steam started to rise. Maybe because I'm quirkless, but I'm always made fun of. Izuku lied. He hated doing it, but what choice did he have? Hey I have a quirk that makes me eat people? Yeah. That'd go over well. And why was it going haywire? Why did it sense weakness? Why did it sense prey? All Might was the only one next to him, and he wasn't anything of the sort. 
he shook the idea of prey out of his head. The last thing he wanted was to see humans as food. That's probably why I find the idea of saving people really cool. And because I'm a monster. I want to be like you and save people with a fearless smile. Can I ever be able to save them, or will I eat them by accident? That's why I want to be the greatest hero, like you." He finished, looking at his idol. He noticed a lot of steam, and wondered where it came from. Then it cleared. Revealing a frail man. What are it? He shouted in shock. You're deflating? Izuku shouted. Are you a fake? You're so skinny. He continued. The frail man who was All Might sighed. I am All Might. You know how people flex at pools? It's like that. And then he gushed blood from his mouth. Waha! Izuka shouted, both out of shock and to keep the tendrils from seeking fresh meat. Young man, now that you've seen me like this, please don't tell anyone. Don't post about this online, even accidentally. He then lifted his shirt, showing what looked like the impact zone of a giant bullet. Five years ago I was badly injured by an enemy of mine. Half of my respiratory organs were destroyed. My stomach was also completely annihilated. I become emaciated from repeated surgeries and the after effects, so I can only work as a hero for three hours a day. After that, he gestured to himself. F five years ago? Izuku asked, desperately trying to force down the feeling of his back beginning to bulge. Is that when you fought Toxic Chainsaw? All Might grumbled at that. That punk couldn't have defeated me. He growled. The fight that did this was kept from the world, as per my request. I will still save people with a smile. I, the symbol of peace, cannot be daunted by evil. I smile to show the pressure of heroes and to suppress the fear within me. Pros like me are always risking their lives. Therefore, I cannot say you can become a hero without a quirk. Those words slammed into Izuku like a cinder block. I I see. He choked out. Now finally beginning to prevent his feeding tendrils from showing up. If you really want to help people, why don't you become a police officer? They're often teased for getting villain's hand delivered to them, but it is still a worthy occupation. He paused just before entering a stairwell. It is good to dream, but remember what is realistic. He said as a parting. As Tashinori walked down the stairs, he contemplated the situation. Maybe I was a bit harsh, but that's the way of the world. Also, why did he look familiar? It's like I've seen his face somewhere before. Ah, I might have seen him at a signing booth or something. Now then, I have to get the sludge thing to the police soon he paused as he reached into his pocket and found nothing. What? Where is it? He asked himself, as he looked around. And then he saw the plume of smoke. Damn it. When the kid grabbed me I must have dropped it. I was careless. He said to himself. He then quickly ran to the scene in his deflated form. He'd have to use that. He soon arrived at the scene. He saw Death Arms and his pals fighting against the sludge man. Damn! It escaped. He then overheard the people talking. It has a child as a hostage. Why aren't the pros doing anything? That chilled his blood. I'm pathetic, he cursed at himself. Meanwhile, Izuku was looking through his notebook. He stopped on the page with All Might's signature. His words kept going through his head. It's good to dream, but remember what is realistic. Even a pro said it. I can't be a hero without a quirk. And mine is just evil. He wiped tears from his eyes. Shut it. You already knew this, another part of his mind said. Well, dad'll be happy, he thought to himself. His father was away on a business trip, and he had been for five years. He still checked in by call or text whenever he could though. Maybe I should tell him when I get home, he thought. And then he saw the sludge monster. Shit. How'd it get free? And then he remembered. He had knocked the bottle out of All Might's hands. 
This is my fault, he thought. Where's All Might? He heard one of the civilians shout. Damn it. This is my fault. I wasted his time. Izuku thought to himself. And then he saw who the hostage was. Kaken. Katsuki screamed in anger and slight fear. Someone, anyone, Dio something, he screamed in his mind. Kachin. He heard Izuku shout. Shit shit shit. I take it back. Anyone but him. Hey. You. I'll get you this T.I. what the F.U.C.K. This last part was because of the fact that Izuku had spouted those godawful tendrils from his back. Let him go. Izuku shouted. Fists clenched. Or what? The slime villain sneered. Who's that? Someone screamed. Izuku glared. Please don't make me use this. He pleaded. Ha! Your little decorations don't scare am what the fuck are you doing? The villain screeched as Izuku buried the tendrils into him. And then Bakugu saw the villain being consumed by the black wriggling mass that spread over it. It detached that part of itself, which then became nothing but a black fluid which was greedily slurped up by the tendrils. Last chance. Let, Izuku's teeth elongated. Him, black and red spines grew out of his back, rippling like a set of waves. Go! And then his hands became fucking claws. The villain rushed away from him. Leaving Katsuki on the streets, coughing. And then All Might appeared. Even though I admonished you. I didn't put it into practice. He declared. All Might. The sludge villain shouted. Pros are always risking their lives. He screamed, blood pouring from his mouth. Detroit. Smash. He declared, vaporizing the villain. The force of the punch was so powerful that it caused a great gust of wind. If it wasn't for MT Lady the other pros would have been blown away. And then it caused a temporary tornado. The pressure change then caused clouds to roll in and then it started to rain. Hey! With a single punch All Might changed the weather. A bystander shouted. The after effects were predictable. Izuku was scolded by the heroes and law enforcement officers, save a rookie cop named Kidani, who was arguing with her superior, while Katsuki was praised. But he ignored it. Some help you all were, he thought to himself. He turned to look at his friend, he scared the absolute crap out of him but they were still friends, why aren't you praising the person who actually did the work, he thought. Later that day, Izuku was walking through his neighborhood. I never got to apologize to All Might for wasting his time and lying, he thought to himself. Maybe I'll post it on his website. Now his thoughts drifted to the use of his quirk. He shuddered at how satisfying it was to feed off of the villain. How full he felt, and how it mutated. Those claws weren't there before, he thought. Is it that I become stronger the more I consume? D-E-K-U. It was Kaken. Now, most people would assume that he was being mean. However, it was an agreement between the two. Izuku could call in Kaken, while he could call Izuku Deku. He had stopped running and was panting. I just wanted to say thanks. He said. And also. Please don't do that again. I'm gonna have nightmares again. S sorry. Izuku stuttered. He knew Kaken didn't like his quirk, and he knew of the nightmares it caused him. It was one of the reasons he never tried to show it. He had had similar nightmares, although he was pretty sure that the views were different. As his involved watching himself devour everything. His friend waved goodbye before walking off. Now then. I need to think of a realistic future dash I am here. A all might? B but you were surrounded by reporters. Izuku stammered. Ha ha ha. It's all too easy for me to get away from them. Why? Because I'm all my bleg. The last part was because his form dropped back to his deflated mode and he coughed up a lot of blood. Hey aha! Izuku screamed. Thankfully the feeding tendrils didn't show up, 
probably because of the meal he'd just eaten. Young man, I came for a few reasons. First of all, thank you. If you hadn't spoken to me, I'd just be a guy in a bodysuit who was all talk. All Might said. I it was my fault. Izuku stuttered. I got in your way because of all of the things I said. Izuku trailed off. And that brings me to the second reason. Why did you lie to me? That brought Izuku back to the conversation. W what? He asked. I saw your quirk. It was rather impressive. All Might said, disappointment written all over his face. It's not impressive. Izuku stated to the ground. All it can do is kill. You saw what it did. It devours people. Whenever I smell blood and I can smell it now I have to force the feeding tendrils down. It really hurt to admit the truth. Feeding tendrils? Is that what they're called? All Might asked. Why yes. And you knew you had this quirk before? All Might asked. Why yes. I'll tell you how it was activated. When Kakin the kid who the sludge monster was holding hostage and I were kids, we got lost exploring the city. And then a man offered us help. Of course, we knew not to talk to strangers, so we shook our heads. And then he lunged at us and grabbed us. Kakin I mean Katsuki, has a quirk that allows him to sweat a nitroglycerin-like substance, only it's a lot more powerful, so he can make explosions. At the time, he could only make things the size of party poppers. So they didn't help. He trailed off, thinking about that fateful night. Flashback. The man held onto them both and he wouldn't let go. Kachin was bound and gagged. Screaming under his gag, tears filling his eyes. Izuku backed away into the street wall. Now that your friend's bound, I'll just start with you. The obese man chuckled, removing his belt. Izuku began to scream. Help! Anyone! H.A.L. and then that fat man pressed a greasy hand to his chin under his mouth. Yes! Scream! I love it when they scream. He grabbed Izuku by the hair and dragged him to his van. Let me go! Izuku shouted as he struggled. Stop shouting! It's not like anyone will hear you. My quirk stops all sound around me. The man laughed. Let me go, 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 let me go. Izuku felt his back begin to hurt. Get off, get off, get off. The man laughed and tossed Izuku to the ground. Now then, let's begin, he sneered, beginning to take his pants off. Izuku screamed both from fear and in the pain of his back ripping open. Oh God, the man gasped. And then Izuku looked behind him and saw it. For black tendrils, each wriggling and covered with spikes at the end, had erupted from his back. Katsuki saw the man pause before he got to Izuku and then he saw those things appear. The man screamed in shock. And then four squelching sounds rang out, one after the other. Izuku didn't know what was going on. The four tendrils impaled themselves in the man, and then he started to melt. He screamed in agony as he dissolved into a black substance. And then, before the substance could lose his shape. A sound like dry grass rang out and he dissolved into the tendrils. Izuku felt the tendrils retract into him. And then the memories hit. He saw the man claim his first victims, what he did to them, and when he put them out of their misery. He saw him evade capture for years. And then he saw himself consume the man. And then it was over. He sat there for a few minutes, gasping as the memory slowly faded from his mind. The last thing he remembered was seeing a police officer radio in for backup before darkness took him. Flashback end. And that's what happened. Izuku finished, swallowing the bile forming in his throat. He didn't want to think of how good it felt to consume. To feed, to devour that man. It doesn't matter what quirk you have. Do you know what every great hero has said about their first rescue, their first heroic act? Their bodies moved on their own. And I'm positive you had the same feeling. Izuku fell to the ground, tears in his eyes. You can be a hero, all might finished. To hear that, 
that no matter how evil his quirk was, All Might believed in him, was something that made him cry out. A massive weight was lifted from his shoulders. And this was how Izuku Midoriya started down the path to become the world's greatest hero. Meanwhile, his sludge villain was left in a small box in a holding cell. It wasn't comfortable. That green-haired brat. Damn him. He shouted. When I get out of here I'll take over his body and use it to kill his mother. But before I kill her I'll already P.E. her. And then when I've broken her I'll slit her throat and set their house on fire. And then he stopped his ranting when he felt a presence. It was incredibly powerful and incredibly evil. It felt like something was choking out the sun, leaving the world in perpetual darkness. What was that you said you were going to do to my wife, with my son's body no less? A deep, almost mechanical voice coldly said. The sludge villain rotated his eyes towards the source. It was a tall man with a black mask on his face. W who are you? How did you get in? He yelled. I sim- Chapter 3, The Entrance Exam, two hours later, Izuka found himself walking towards the building where the examinations would take place. I never got to try out All Might's power. He thought to himself. I absorbed his DNA, but did I get his power? He asked to himself. D-E-K-U. He turned around and saw Bakugo walking toward him, a smile on his face. Kaken. He replied. So how are you feeling? His best friend asked. Nervous. Izuku truthfully answered. Well I know something that'll cheer you up. Muto was banned from the exam. W what? Izuku stuttered out. Okugu laughed. The bastard got drunk and tried to fight a cop. He's never going to get into UA. The two of them ignored those muttering about Bakugu. So are you gonna do your best? He asked Izuku. Izuku nodded. I'll try my hardest. His friend gave him a fist bump. Just don't try your hardest near me, okay? I'd like to not be overshadowed, he told him. Izuku chuckled, feeling better. His friend then ran into the building. Izuku had paused about 20 feet from the door. This is it. This is the first step towards being a hero, he put his foot forward, defying his inner doubts. And then as he brought his other foot forward he tripped on himself. Well shoot, he thought, bracing for impact. But then no impact came. His fall stopped suddenly, but there was no pain. He noticed that he was levitating. Are you all right? A cheery voice asked. Izuku slowly turned his head towards the voice and then started to flail. It was a girl. And she was talking to him. She evidently had some sort of levitation quirk. I'm sorry for using my quirk on you without permission but it would be bad luck if you fell right? She's pretty he thought, eyes still wide. Are you nervous? She asked. Izuku only managed to stammer awkwardly. We should do our best. See you. She waved before leaving. Izuku stood there for a few seconds. I talked to a girl, he mentally screamed. The entrance exam orientation was hosted by none other than present Mike, a hero with a sonic quirk. Izuku didn't like sonic quirks due to the fact that Muto had one, he created a high-frequency screech that could cause several nasty side effects. Although he did like Mike. He listened to his show every week. Welcome listeners to my entrance show. Everybody say hey. He was met with silence. W what a refined response, he stammered out, a little embarrassed. I'll give a quick rundown on the exam. You will all be competing in mock battles in an urban setting. Each person will go to a random area. Bakuku and Izuku looked at each other's cards. That's so we won't be able to help our friends, Katsuki responded. Even though we're consecutive we're in two different places, Izuku said aloud. Good luck, the ash blonde explosion user said to his friend. Perhaps we'll each get the highest scores of our respective areas? You're just glad you don't have to be near me, Deku muttered. Is it a crime to not want to be near your quirk? It gave me ophidiophobia. 
Authors note, a fear of snakes because the tendrils can sometimes act like snakes. Present Mike had gotten back on topic by now. There are three types of villains here. Each one has been assigned a point modifier based on difficulty. Your goal is to defeat these villains to gain points. However, unheroic acts or attacking exam takers is forbidden. I have a question. A boy shouted. Yes? Mike asked, a spotlight activating over the boy. On the printout there are four villains. If this is a misprint then this school should be ashamed of itself. He shouted in a rather rude way. And you? With the curly hair. And me? Izuko stammered, pointing at himself. Katsuki growled. Stop muttering. It's distracting. The bossy boy yelled. If you're on a pleasure trip, leave immediately. As sorry Izuko stammered. Chuckles arose. Shut it ya bastards. Bakugu shouted. To answer your question, Mike said, the fourth type of villain is worth zero points. It is only an obstacle to be avoided. Thank you. I apologize for the interruption. The bossy boy sat down. Muttering broke out. And finally, as a present I'll give you our school motto, plus ultra. Izuko soon arrived at the site, along with the rest of those assigned. Alright, it's time to put the 10 months of training to the test. I'll soon become the hero I've always dreamed of being. Izuku mentally said to himself. Most of the rest of the group was muttering at the sheer size of the testing ground. It's like a city itself. One said. They have more than one of these? Another stated. UA is amazing. Izuku was shivering, remembering the rules. Defeat as many villains as possible, avoid the obstacle, and survive for 10 minutes. H how can everyone be this confident? Some even have equipment for their quirks. Then he noticed a certain face. S she's here. The nice girl. I need to thank her. And then he felt a hand on his shoulder. Hey, a familiar voice spoke out. H he's here too? That girl over there is trying to focus. Why are you here? Are you here to throw off our focus? And no. Of course not. Izuku stuttered. He overheard some of the other examinees talking about how he almost tripped, and how they were lucky that he was here. Lucky? I'll show you lucky when I and oh. No no no. They are not to be harmed. Izuku fought down the desire to feed. He mentally thanked All Might for the rabbits. Okay. Start. Present Mike shouted over the microphone. Everyone turned, confused. What? There's no countdown in a real fight. Now get going. Ha? Huh? Izuku asked, and then he saw everyone else running towards the entrance. I'm behind already. He shouted, before activating his quirk. Using the extra power toward his muscles, he quickly caught up. He flashed back to what All Might had said about one for all. Flashback. You never had a chance to take it for a test drive. Normally it'd show up in two to three hours, but you've probably already digested it. Just. Be prepared for the physical repercussions it'll have on your body. That confused Izuku. Ha? Huh? He had asked. When you use one for all, squeeze your buttocks and yell, from within your heart, as flashback end. Izuku was brought out of his memory when a robot appeared in front of him. A single pointer, he thought to himself. Target acquired. The robot spoke. Izuku already rushed towards it, claws out. The best bet would be to decapitate it, he thought. He pushed off of the ground and brought his claws to its neck. The head separated with a bit of resistance. All right. That's one point, he thought to himself. Eight minutes and two seconds left. Mike shouted. I it's been two minutes already. Izuku shouted. Points. I need points fast. He said to himself as he rushed past several robot corpses. He soon entered a clearing and saw many people fighting. T the nice girl. 
he said to himself. He watched as she lifted several robots up high. Release! She shouted, causing them to drop. Phew! That's 28! She shouted. 28? Izuku thought to himself. And then the bossy boy appeared. Apparently he had engines in his legs. 45! He shouted. 45? Izuku spoke aloud. As he listened to the other examinees, he began to panic. The amount of enemies is decreasing fast. I need to find some. With that, he forced power into his legs and took off. Soon, he found some. The claws came out, and he slashed through the robots not even felling it. Meanwhile, several pro heroes were watching the prospective students fight. The examinees will have to search a large area fast, Nizu, the principal of UA, said. Therefore tracking, mobility, and attacking abilities are important. Also, the ability to stay calm is essential. These are key abilities for heroes on the streets. There's that explosion kid. Seems crazed, but he isn't exactly the worst, one of the teachers said. That kid with the retractile claws hold up. Is that? I think it is. Another quirk ripped from a video game. And that one, who oh boy. This year's recruits look very interesting, Vlad King said. But you know what they say, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Their true test begins now. And then he pressed a big red button. A massive explosion shook the mock city. Everyone looked towards it in shock, Izuku included. He had just managed to decapitate both heads of a three-pointer, bringing his score up to 44. It was a massive thing, easily 20 stories tall. He had a flashback to Mick's warning to avoid the zero-pointer. Isn't that a little big, he squealed in his mind. It then brought a giant fist down, blowing him back. Everyone started running, completely ignoring him. The bossy boy gave him a glance before sprinting away. I I hope I got enough. And then he sensed prey. Oh wow. He turned and saw the nice girl pinned under some rubble, seemingly unable to get out. He mentally squashed the desire to feed as he remembered her nice words to him. Without thinking, he rushed towards her. The pros watched in amazement, but Izuku didn't know that he was the center of the hero's attention. He felt an amazing energy rush through him. And then he hurled himself into the air. Clench your buttocks, and from deep within you heart, yell smash. He punched the zero-pointer in the face with a powerful right hook, his claws having reverted into hands. The blow dented the robot and caused it to fall back, and tiny bits of it exploded. And then Izuku realized he was 200 feet in the air, and three of his limbs were broken. As he fell, he felt the intense pain. It almost made him pass out. One minute left. Mike shouted. I'm an idiot. Ten months is barely enough, he thought as he fell. Both my legs and my right arm are broken. If I use a smash on the ground with my left at the right time I'll survive. However, I won't be able to get any more points calm down Izuku, you have a lot, now panic about the rapidly approaching ground dash and then all thoughts were stopped when the nice girl slapped his face. The momentum stopped in such a way that he felt nothing. She saved me again, he thought to himself. Our release. She gasped. He fell a meager three feet to the ground. This allowed him to see the second part of her quirk, her ability to barf rainbows. I, I am safe, he thought to himself. And she's all right. That's good. He then noticed his arms were beginning to heal. It was slow though. He estimated it would take quite a bit of time ironically, a bullet wound took less time to head less mass to fix, and all that. I'll. I'll be all right, he stammered obviously, his body didn't agree with his attitude, as he was beginning to see spots. Time's up. Mike shouted. Izuku's eyes rolled into the back of his head and he passed out. The other candidates of City B started muttering about Izuku's move. They asked about the quirk and why he was so jumpy. They're all missing the point, the bossy boy thought to himself. Don't they see? He did what he did to save that girl. 
He was aware of the remaining time and his own safety, and the points he needed to pass. And he still did it anyway. If we weren't in an exam I'd have done the same. Wait. Exam? Of course, he was brought out of his musings when an old lady walked up. Good work everyone. She then stopped at a random examinee. Have some gunnies. She said, handing said treats to the prospective student. T thanks, he stammered out, confused. A French boy held out a finger. This lady is the backbone of UA. He said. Said old lady walked up to Azuku. Oh my, your body suffered this much from your quirk? She asked. Evidently it's not used to it yet. She puckered up her lips and kissed him on the head. W what? One of the examinees yelled. The French boy spoke again. That's UA's registered high school nurse, the youthful hero, recovery girl. They watched as a green glow enveloped Azuka's limbs. Her quirk causes super regeneration in those she kisses. It's the only reason exams such as this are possible. Does anyone else need healing? She asked. Meanwhile, the bossy boy was thinking. I see. So if the exam is set up like that. That means he. One week later. Izuku? 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 Inko asked. Her son was just staring at the fish she made. Ha! Huh? He focused back to his mother. She was a lovely lady. She hadn't changed much since he was a child. Sure she had gained weight when he was five, but by the time he was seven she'd dropped it. You've been talking to your fish for a while. Are you alright? Jay just worried. I don't know the exact amount I'd need. Well, if the exams are like what you told me, I'm sure that 44 is a very solid number. And your written score was likely perfect. Why yeah. He repeated. I'm glad I had the nerve to tell her about the full extent of my quirk during those 10 months. I had told dad, but I had never gotten around to telling mom. She'd keep it a secret, but some groups may try to target her to get to me. After all, if the government knew the full extent, they'd either hunt me down or use me as a weapon. He paused to pick up a weight. Izuku. Izuku. It came. His mother shouted. Izuku took the letter and went into his room. Izuku stared at the letter for a moment before carefully opening it. Instead of a letter, there was a metal disc. When he put the disc on the table, it began to light up. A hologram appeared. I am here as a projection. It was All Might. A All Might? Izuku shouted. I had to do some paperwork, so I couldn't contact you. I apologize. He bowed. Izuku was stunned. Actually, I came to this town to work at UA. The symbol of peace declared. All Might is working at UA. Izuku shouted to himself. Hmm. All Might asked as a hand tapped him on the elbow. Wrap it up? But I have so much more to say. It's going to push everyone back? All right. Okay. First of all, you passed the written exam with flying colors. In fact, I have it on good authority that the principal is personally impressed. And your practical wasn't shabby either 44 points. Well done. It'd be a close pass, but a pass. It'd? Izuku asked, picking that part up. That is, if that was all there was to it. Izuku looked up, confused. I'm an entertainer as well. Now take a look at this video. The video showed the nice girl he saved offering to give him some of her points. Izuku was stunned. She came directly after the exam to try to negotiate on your behalf in person. This led to US staff to make a decision. You see? The practical exam is more than just defeating villains. There's another type of point. Rescue points. These are given by a panel of judges. And you, Izuku Midoriya, got 60. You are, A.S. Seen here, are I in second place. Izuku just stared, jaw hanging low in shock, sweat beating on his head. 
he saw that many others, including the nice girl, had more rescue points than villain points. She had 45, placing her in fourth. You both pass. All Might said. Izuku's eyes watered, almost ready to bring forth a flood. T this is crazy. He muttered. Come, young Midoriya. This is your hero academia. All Might calmly finished, hand outstretched. And then the recording stopped. Izuku immediately reached for his phone. Dad. I got in. He screamed. That's great son. Came the response. Inko came in as well, sobbing in joy. It was times like this that they wished Hisashi was home. At the League of Villains base, Hisashi put down the phone. He really wished he could be there for his family. He then scowled under his mask. His son was going to UA. As proud as he was that he was accepted, he was worried. He was afraid that Izuku would die due to a villain. He was afraid that he'd have to fight his son, especially since he was now the ninth one for all wielder. And lastly, he was afraid that his son's quirk would be seen as too villainous, chapter 4, quirk testing, the night that Izuku go this letter. All Might had contacted him. Izuku quickly sprinted to the beach. All Might. He shouted, tears in his eyes. All Might clenched his teeth, blood pouring out. Izuku didn't notice. All Might? He asked. Izuku was confused at that. And then he heard others. All Might? Where? Repeat after me, I'm sorry, I had the wrong person he hissed to Izuku. He quickly realized why he said that. W wait. I had the wrong person. He shouted. He ignored the depressed mutterings. They both let out a sigh. So, congrats on passing he told Izuku. Th thank you. Izuku stuttered out. By the way, I didn't tell the school about our connection. After all, you'd probably be the first one to call that cheating. Thanks for your concern. Izuku said. I was surprised that you'd be teaching at UA though. After all, your HQ is and stop right there. All Might sighed. Watching his air ramble like that always seemed to make his hair stand on end. I was offered the job while I was searching for a successor. My original plan was to find one among the students. Izuku nodded. That made sense. And my body broke after only one use of one for all. I can't control it. All my turn to his air. It can't be helped. You can't just learn like that. Izuku understood. Right now, it's either all or nothing. However, you should be able to eventually control it so you can use what your body can handle. He turned to his muscled form, crushing a few gas canisters. Like this. Hey it is All Might. Someone shouted. All Might paused. Time to run. He shouted. Izuku followed him, using his quirk to keep up. When classes started Izuku barely managed to get out the door on time. His mother was really worried about him, constantly double-checking his pack. His father had called over speaker as well, helping him pack by listing off what he was missing. He had that kind of memory. However, he couldn't focus on that right now. 1A, 1A, where is it? He asked. This place is so big. And then he saw the door leading to his class. And so is the door. Is it for students with enlarging quirks? He asked. Beyond this door are the elite of the hero exam. He had a picture of the bossy boy glaring and of a cowering Kachin. He shook his head. Hopefully I'm not in the class with scary people. He said, before opening the door. Get your feet off the desk. There was the bossy kid. Eh? What was that? And there was Kachin. It's disrespectful to the makers of the desk and of the students who have sat here before. Nope. Where the hell did you come from asshole? The explosive blonde sneered. I came from Sumai Academy. My name is Tenya Ida. The glasses wearing boy said, fist pounding his chest. Oh, you're an elite? 
It'll be fun watching you get kicked into the dirt. Kicked into the dirt? Do you really intend to become a hero? Then the now named Ida turned to look at him. It's you. He muttered. Now everyone else was staring at him. Oh. Uh, gee good morning. Izuku stuttered. Good morning. Ida shouted. I am from Sumai Academy. My name is I already heard. Izuku said, still quite flustered at the attention. I'm Izuku Midoriya. It's nice to meet you Ida he said, embarrassed. You realized that there was something more to the practical exam, didn't you? Ida asked. Ha? Huh? He asked. I had no idea, and I misjudged you. He shouted. I'd hate to admit it, but you are clearly better than I. Izuku heard Kachin mutter damned right he is. S sorry, but I didn't realize anything. Izuku deadpanned. Oh hey. It's you. Izuku turned around and saw a familiar face. I it's that nice girl. As she looks great in her uniform, he thought to himself, unable to keep his eyes from wandering a little. He remembered something his father had said at that moment. Good looks are nice, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. When choosing a girlfriend, you must look at their intelligence, kindness, and moral standard. Those are the big three. He stopped zoning out when she was chanting break. 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 W well, it was thanks to you going to speak to him directly that got me those extra points. Ha? Huh? How did you know about that? She asked. Bakugu, meanwhile, was thinking about something. Flashback, middle school. So it seems like we have two students going to UA. For you Midoriya. This is nothing short of a miracle. Their court counselor said. Katsuki, you may go. He left but then put an ear to the door. He wished he hadn't. You quirkless freak. How did you cheat? I, I didn't cheat. Izuku sobbed. Katsuki was supposed to be the first student from this school to be accepted into UA. And now you ruined the dreams of a future hero. He winced at the sound of a fist hitting flesh. Thankfully, like always, the sound of impalement, gurgling, and liquefaction didn't follow. Sensei, someone told me that I could become a hero. I could do it with my own effort. That's why I'm going. He backed away from the door just as his friend pushed it open, his hand holding his cheek. Katsuki glared at the counselor, before flipping him the bird. Flashback end. He snarled at the fucking quack. And then he disappeared a few days later. The trail went cold. If I didn't know better I think Izuku did it, but the during time period in which he vanished Izuku and I were playing video games. Meanwhile, the round-faced girl was still continuing to talk. I wonder if today will be more than just the orientation. Maybe we'll get to meet our teacher. Go somewhere else if you want to play at being friends. A tired voice said. Izuku looked towards the sound and saw what he first thought was a caterpillar. And then he saw the face. It looked messy. The kind girl turned. As well as Ida. This is the hero course. The zipper of the sleeping bag, Izuku's brain finally realized what it was over his shock, went down, and they saw a pair of hands holding a juice box. With a powerful slurp, the man sucked it dry. Someone's here, he thought to himself. Unknown to him Ida and the round-faced girl thought the same thing. The man in the sleeping bag managed to lift himself up to a standing position while still in the sleeping bag, how he did so was beyond Izuku. It took you 8 seconds to quiet down. Time is limited. You're not rational enough. Izuku noticed that the man smelled strongly of cats. In his opinion, he looked like a homeless person. He must be a teacher. That must mean he's a pro hero. Izuku thought to himself. Besides, Yue's security would be able to stop a predator. I'm Shota Aizawa, your homeroom teacher. He droned. It's nice to meet you. Homeroom? Izuku thought to himself. The teacher grabbed what looked like a uniform from his sleeping bag. 
I know it's kind of rushed, but put these on and head out into the field. Ha! Huh? Most of the class said simultaneously. A quirk assessment test. The entire class of one is shouted at the same time. What about the entrance ceremony or orientation? The nice girl asked. If you're going to be a hero, you don't have time for such leisurely events. Their teacher said. There are very few restrictions on the teachers here. Besides, you've all been doing this since middle school, right? Sounds of agreement followed. You weren't allowed to use your quirks during those. Averages of those tests are still used here. It's irrational and most likely due to the Ministry of Education procrastinating. Bakugu, you were the top of the practical exam. How far could you throw a softball in middle school? 67 meters he respectfully said. Try throwing one using your quirk. The teacher monotoned. He walked up into a circle at the beginning. You may do whatever you want as long as you stay in the circle. Aizawa flatly stated. Die. Izuku's childhood friend shouted. Die? That's Kachin. Izuka thought as they watched him use an explosive blast to send the ball flying. Know your own maximum first. That's the most rational way to form the foundations of a hero. He held up a device that read the distance the ball went. It read 705.2 meters. Whoa! The entire class shouted. Various things were said. One of the girls, who had pink skin and a set of horns, said this looks fun. That caught their teacher's attention. This looks fun, huh? Izuku figured something bad was about to happen. You have three years to become a hero. Do you think that you'll have an attitude like that the whole time? A positively evil grin spit the teacher's face. All right then. Whoever gets the last overall in all eight tests gets expelled. A panicked yell rang out through the class. Expulsion for the one in last place? This is bad. I can only use one for all at 100% or 0%. I'll have to use my quirk, and who knows what'll happen, but we're free to do what we want as teachers, as I've mentioned. Aizawa said, holding his hair up. Welcome to UA's hero course. Last place will be expelled? But it's only the first day. No, any expulsion for getting last would be too cruel. The nice girl said. Natural disasters, big accidents, and selfish villains. Each of these can end the career or the life of a hero. Now, the real tests begin. The first test was a 50-meter dash. Ida got 3.04 seconds due to the fact that his quirk was built for speed. He was by far one of the fastest. Izuku managed to get 4.67 seconds due to his quirk. Katsuki got 4.13 seconds. At the very least I can outrun Izuku. But his quirk... Is it evolving? Bakugu thought to himself. The second test was grip. Izuku remembered All Might's words on All for One and his own personal analogy. However, he knew that he had a good quirk for this sort of thing, so he should use that. It didn't break his body. He got 300 kilograms. The third test was a standing long jump. After his childhood friend used his explosions to fly, Izuku decided to force his quirk down into his muscles. When he started feeling pain her released them. He got a pretty good score. The fourth test was repeated side steps. No one could compete with the guy with the bouncy balls for hair. And then came the ball throw. The nice girl, whose name was apparently Yurarika Achiko, threw her ball before him. She used her quirk and let it fly. After about four minutes, Aizawa held up the screen. It had an infinity symbol. Izuku started to panic. Everyone's had an amazing score at least once. I've been in the top, sure, but not the best at any. It's now or never if I really want to use one for all. It doesn't look good for Midoriya right now Ida said. Hey watch it. He's still doing great. Katsuki shouted. Then why hasn't he done the thing he did with the giant robot? So that's it, their teacher thought. Meanwhile Izuku was running through all of the compliments about his future. 
they came from All Might, his mother, and his father. I'll definitely become a hero, he mentally screamed, one for all building up. He didn't notice his teacher's eyes glowing red. He did notice the fact that both one for all and his other quirk went dead. Izuku felt physically weak and that he was violently ill as well. It was like he would pass out. And then the ball landed. Only 46 meters, he thought, mentally calculating the distance. And then a robotic voice confirmed it. W what happened, he thought to himself. I was definitely trying to use it. He said to himself. I erased your quirk. His teacher droned. The entrance exam is irrational. After all, a kid like you got in strength. Regeneration, Claus. I have an idea on what you can do, yet you're holding back. Izuku paled, and then he saw something. T those goggles. I see. Your eraser head, an underground hero. Underground heroes didn't get paid. His father had called them the real heroes. He had said that the pro heroes may be overrated besides All Might, but the underground ones, those that voluntarily refused payment or fame, were the true heroes. I can tell you can't control your quirk the underground hero said. Do you intend to become incapacitated every time you try to save someone? T that's not my intention he was then grabbed by the scarves that the underground hero wore, and they pulled him in. Whatever your intention, I'm saying that's what everyone around you will be forced to do. Izuku gasped, his sight flickering in and out. There was once an oppressively happy hero who saved over a thousand people single-handedly. And what of your other forces, hmm? I'm not someone out of touch with video games. By now, his vision was almost gone. With your power, you'd better learn to be more careful or drop before you get towers hurt from your lack of control. He then mercifully closed his eyes and let him go. Izuka collapsed to the ground, panting. I've returned your quirk. I'll give you another chance at the ball throw. Now get it over with. The other students started to mutter to themselves as Izuku hauled himself to his feet and got into the circle. He's got enough points to not risk last place, but let's see what he'll do. Will he pull out that hysterical strength and mix it with what I dearly hope isn't blacklight? Or will he use one or the other? Izuku wound up his arm. He's right. One for all does leave me vulnerable for extended periods if I'd have to regenerate broken bones, and every second counts in a battle. Wait. It only took me a moment to recover from a wound with little surface area. That's IT. Smash. He shouted, forcing both his quirk and one for all into his index finger. The ball flew incredibly high, and eventually came to a stop. The screen read 7,053 meters. That's over 7 kilometers. What did he do? Eraser head thought to himself. Sensei. Izuku ground out. He clenched his hand, showing that only one of his fingers was broken. I can still move. Aizawa watched the sparks on Izuku's finger. Well I'll be damned, he pulled it off. And then another thought came to him. Oh boy, if it really is blacklight. I'll have to brush up on my gaming. Chapter 5, he got over 7,000 meters? Someone yelled. Yes. A hero-like record. Yurarika cheered, happy for her classmate. He had a strange quirk in the entrance exam, and it seemed to cause his limbs to swell up as well Ida said. It's not very stylish, Yuga said. Katsuki was smirking. Suck on that you fucking extras. He thought back to the teachers and students in both elementary and middle school. Wherever they are, I hope they're upset. League of Villain Base. All for one relished in the screams of the school guidance counselor who dared to lay a finger on his precious son. He had been torturing him for weeks. Every scream was music to his ears. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end sooner or later. Now then, I tire of you. Your quirk of calming people isn't useful to what I have planned. Therefore, it is time for you to die. He called in Tamura, his student in Villianly. Please touch all five fingers of your left hand on what remains of his left foot. He asked. Yes, Sensei. 
the man-child stated through the radio. His quirk causes matter to disintegrate when he touches something with all five fingers of one of his hands, all for one then radioed him again. Make sure to make it as slow as possible. Is your finger all right? Yuraraka asked. Uh, yeah. Izuku said. Bull fucking shit Deku. It's broken. Bakugu shouted. I it'll heal. I I heal fast. And that's another thing about that quirk he thought to himself. Sure enough, the pain was already fading. Flashback, just a few days after Izuku's quirk manifested. Your quirk's so cool Kachin. I wish mine was too. The four-year-old Katsuki turned. Your quirk scares the hell out of me Deku. It's already better than mine. That brought Izuku up short. It's as scary? H.I.'s friend whimpered. Don't worry. It's not nearly as scary as your dad when he's angry. Flashback end. Izuku fought through the pain in the next few exercises. By the final one, however, his finger was back to normal. I was right. It's the size of the wound in question. No matter the location. After all of the tests were done, Aizawa had them all stand in front of him. All right, time for your test scores. It's too much of a hassle to explain one at a time, so they'll all be shown at once. Izuku noticed that he got 14th place. Oh thank goodness, he thought. Last place went to someone named Toru. By the way, I was lying about the expulsion thing. Their teacher said as he turned off the hologram. Stunned silence resulted. It was a rational threat to draw out the maximum power of your quirks. He said, smiling in a creepy way. We're done here. There are handouts with information back in the classroom. He he said in a monotone while walking away. Oh, Midoriya, have the nurse fix your fin she stopped when Izuku held up his, now fully healed, finger. I heal fast sensei. It's part of my quirk. He nodded. Very well. Aizawa turned when he heard a familiar voice. Aizawa you liar. So you were watching all night? He asked. Do you have too much time on your hands? He mentally chuckled at the joke. That's mean. It's just as mean as your lie about expulsion. After all, you completely cut out last year's class for not having potential. Obviously you think this whole class has potential, especially the potential of the green-haired kid. You seem to be supporting him quite a bit. Now, I don't know why, but a teacher shouldn't show favorites. And I didn't expel him let alone anyone else for a few reasons. 1. They all showed potential. 2. Said green-haired kid has problem child written all over him. This will be a fun year. I'm so hungry. Izuku muttered to himself, plodding alone. Healing his wounds had made his quirk desire more food, so he wanted to get home and eat something his mother made. Then he felt a hand on his shoulder, and had to mentally fight down the tendrils. I originally thought that Mr. Aizawa was one of the best heroes, since he's going to be teaching us. However, I don't think a teacher should lie. I see. Ida's not scary. He's just earnest. Hey! Wait up! You're going to the station, right? Hey! You're the Infinity Girl. Ida said. My name is Yurarika Achiko. She replied. You're Ida Tenya, and you're Deku Midoriya, right? Daku! Izuku shouted out loud. Ha! Huh? But that's what that explosion boy called you, right? She asked. That's his nickname for me. It's based on a different way of writing my name. In return, I get to call him Kachin. My real first name is Izuku. Izuku said. Oh, I'm sorry. Although it sounds a bit like the word for it you can do it. Izuku blushed. I think that's what he means. We've been friends since we were little, Izuku stammered. Oi. Wait up. And speak of the devil and he shall appear. Kachin. Izuku shouted. Wanna walk with us? Yuraraka asked. Sure. 
The blonde boy said. You seem. More civil. Ida said. Hey. I can be friendly. He screamed. Ah. There it is. Yuraraka chuckled. Why you? Izuku laughed, the hunger now pushed to the back of his mind. The curriculum of UA was different than most schools. For example, there was English, which was taught by present Mike. And then there was lunch. The cafeteria served gourmet food for incredibly low prices. Izuku had to physically restrain himself from geeking out over lunch rush, the teacher and pro hero who ran the cafeteria. And then, in the afternoon they had basic hero training. Izuku sat down for the first hero class. I am everyone turned to see. Coming through the door like a normal person. It's all might. Wow he really is a teacher. That's his silver age style. This is giving me goosebumps. I teach basic hero training. It's how you all train in basic heroic lessons. And today, we will be doing combat training. Izuku paled while Bakugo gave a grin. And that's not all. He said, pointing to a wall. The wall split, revealing several panels. Each one had a number. These are your hero costumes. Each one was designed based on your preferences. Costumes. Izuku mumbled to himself. Now then, get changed and head to training ground beta. They say the clothes make the man, ladies and gentlemen. Be aware. For now on you are heroes. He took a look around. You all look amazing. Now then, follow me. Flashback. Izuku was panicking. He had the costume we wanted planned out, but he needed to register his quirk. I'm already registered as none, as my quirk came the night after I was sent to the doctor. He said to himself. He then proceeded to call All Might. Quirk registration? He asked. You can update that. Why you can? All Might chuckled. Your quirks are examined throughout your school career. Speaking of that, why was your quirk never registered? T they only looked for the extra toe joint. There was a silence. That's IT? Izuku held the phone away from his ear. I, I know that that isn't the end of it. After all, my dad has the extra joint, but he still has his quirk. Those cheap. Lying dash all night trailed off for a bit. Anyways, sometimes people learn new things about their quirks, and thus they're allowed to update them. Izuku nodded. Thank you so much. They probably won't accept outrageous changes but if you were listed as quirkless you'd probably be fine. Thanks. He hung up and then called his father. Hey dad. I'm going to the city hall to update my quirk status. Izuku heard his father chuckle. It's about time. I'm glad my company looks beyond the toe joint. Yeah. All Might agreed as well. His father snorted. What should I call it? He asked. Well, I have an idea. It's from an old video game I liked to play as a child, and one that's still relevant today. Let's call it. Blacklight. Flashback end. Daku. You Yuraraka. And then he noticed her outfit. I like your costume. It's really down to earth. She said, before looking at her own. I should have filled out a design though. It's just a skin-tight bodysuit. She muttered. A nasally voice piped up. This hero course is the best. Meanwhile All Might took a look at Izuku's costume. It had several noticeable features. S so obvious he thought. All right. It's time for combat training. Sensei. Izuku noticed that the suit of armor was Ida. He looked cool. Will we be trying out urban combat again? All Might shook his head. I'm two steps ahead of you. While most villain battles happen outside. The worst villains will retreat indoors. Therefore, we will be working on internal battles. The class shall be split into teams of two. Two teams will fight. 
one will be heroes and the other will be villains. One of Azuka's classmates, Suyu if he remembered correctly, asked without basic training? All Might laughed. We are doing this to teach you the basics. This is no fight against robots you can beat up. You'll be fighting each other. Immediately questions started pouting in. What determines victory? Can we still beat people up? Will the punishment for failure be expulsion? How will we be split up? Isn't this cape wonderful? All Might grumbled. I shall answer all of your questions. He pulled out a booklet. A script? Izuku shouted. The villains have a five-story building as their lair and have a nuclear weapon hidden there. The heroes are trying to disarm it. The heroes have to get to the device or capture the villains within an allotted time limit. The villains need to protect the nuke. They will also win if they manage to catch both of the heroes. Teams will be decided by drawing lots. Teams are decided that haphazardly? Ida shouted. Pros need to work with whoever they can, and that's usually random. Maybe that's why. Izuku asked. I see. I apologize for my rudeness. It's okay. Now let's get started. Izuku got the first pick of the names. Now, I wonder who I'll be with. He thought as he grabbed a name. Well that makes things. Interesting. He thought. Team A is Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugu. At this Katsuki collapsed and let out a squeaking sound. That is disrespectful towards your teammate. Ida shouted. Hey. I'm just fucking relieved at my pickings. We're gonna win. I got the most powerful out of all of us as out ally. That stunned everyone. More powerful than you? Yuga asked. The rest of the students expected the explosive blonde to cuss, but instead they saw him nod. Trust me, his quirk is the second scariest thing you'll ever see. And the first? Yuga mocked. Izuku's father when he's angry. Bakugu finished. Izuku chuckled. You're still afraid of my dad Kachin? Of fucking course. You saw the look of murder in his eyes when Dokai sensei said to his face that you were nothing but trash. He looked like he was restraining himself from killing him right there. And I swear I heard him repeating, I can't kill him yet. All Might looked a little pale at that. Here, well, next. The teams were interesting. Ida was with Yurarika, Yugo was with Mina, and there seemed to be a strange pattern towards it, but Izuku just couldn't put his finger on it. And the first two teams fighting will be. All Might said as he rustled through the boxes. Team A is heroes and Team D is villains. Everyone else please head to the monitor room. As everyone left, Izuku turned to look at his teammate. Kachin was giving him a look of determination. Izuku managed to stop his hands from shaking and returned the look with a look of his own. Kachin looked surprised before a smirk settled on his face. The villain team will have five minutes to set up. After that the hero team will enter and the battle will start. All Might instructed. Yes sir. All four students said. Young Ida. Young Uraraka. Learn to think from the perspective of villains. This is pretty close to the real thing. Go all out. Don't be afraid to get hurt. From beside Izuku, Bakugu leaned into Izuku's ear. Please don't. He asked of his friend. Izuku looked insulted. Like I would do that. He said. Unfortunately Ida heard him. If things go too far, I will stop it. Both Izuku and his friend breathed a sigh of relief. Even if this is training, it pains me to play a villain. Ida said to his partner. So our job is to protect this thing? He asked, pounding on it. I see. It's paper mache. Hey. Ida. How do you think we'll do? Yurarika asked her partner. Well we're up against Bakugu, so he'll probably want to dive in headfirst. I do believe you can counteract that. And Izuku? She asked. 
he mentioned that it would be foolish if he went all out. I wonder why that is. Ida said, hand on his chin. Because he breaks his bones if he does? Uraraka replied. His friend seemed nervous about the possibility of him going all out. Was he worried about Izuku's health? Meanwhile, Izuku and Katsuki were trying to memorize the floor plan. Wow, this is fucking tough. The explosive teen said to his friend. Who knew that memorizing floor plans would be difficult? At least there's no worry about expulsion so we can relax what the fuck Deku? The last part was because his friend was a nervous wreck. I it's just. We're up against friends and I don't want to hurt them. What if I lose control? What if the scent of blood makes me go crazy? What if Bakugo slapped his friend with the back of his hand? Stop whining damn it! He shouted. He then took a deep breath. Come on Deku, you're not going to lose control. If Mudo didn't end up devoured then they won't. He laughed. He knew his friend had enough self-control. Why yeah. I guess. But still, we're up against Ida and Yurarika. We'll have to be on our guard. Katsuki nodded. We'll have to look up. He summarized. All right. The five minutes are up. It's time to start. All Might announced. Meanwhile, inside the observation room, All Might spoke to the students. Now then, everyone, you should all think about what's going on as well. Izuku and Bakugu decided to go through a window on the second floor. Who oh boy. That was intense. Bakugu said. Izuku had activated his quirk, grabbed Bakugu in a fireman's carry and jumped onto the ledge. He had then proceeded to hang on while his friend opened the window. Be careful. There are a lot of blind spots. Izuku whispered. You're the nerd. What next? Katsuki asked. Keep looking up. Izuku said. I can't control one for all and I don't want to risk using blacklight as it might just kill Ida and Yurarika. So Deku, did you ever write anything on indoor battles in your notebooks? His friend asked. Yes, and I'm trying to remember them. He replied. And then he heard the sound of a motor. Get down! He yelled, dragging his friend to the floor just before the wall caved in due to a kick from Ida. Are you alright? Izuku asked his friend. Yeah. I'll go on ahead. You handle Ida. With that Katsuki blew a hole in the wall and started searching a little more. Aggressively. Meanwhile Ida got back up. I have found you pesky heroes. You will not stop my evil PLA Izuku punched him in the gut. Word of advice, talking isn't a free action, his father had drummed that into his head when he said he wanted to be a hero. Another explosion rang out as Bokugu went through another wall. Surrender and you will be destroyed painlessly and then Izuku kicked him in the chest, exactly where he had punched him. Are we going to monologue or fight? He shouted. As he was fighting Ida, Izuku was thinking about growing up with Kachin living close by. We lived in the same neighborhood so we knew each other before we got our quirks. He was a leader of several of the kids. Good or bad, he was always confident unless it involved anything to do with my dad, the only person Kachin was afraid of, with the possible exception of him, was Izuku's father. Izuku was pretty sure that his dad was the main factor of the two of them staying friends. After all, Kachin swore that his dad had to have been a villain before meeting his mom, because according to him, no one should have an evil glare as powerful as his. And then Ida decided to try to roundhouse him. Izuku crouched, avoiding the kick. Meanwhile, All Might had just finished the description of the capture tape. Man, Izuku's doing so well. He's going against the guy who placed second without using his quirk. Someone said. I see. He's really good at observation. I remember reading some of his notes. His fanboyish tendencies are paying off. All Might thought to himself. Izuku knew he needed to buy Kaken some time, so he activated his quirk to sprint around a corner. All right, Ida will probably follow me. After all, he knows that chasing Kachin wouldn't be a good idea. 
Like him, Kachin is best suited for close range fighting, and he got first place in the entrance exam. While Ida got second place he probably thinks that Kachin's explosions will get to him before he could subdue him. Meanwhile, Bakugu blew a door off of its hinges to get to the stairwell. Alright, Deku should have things under control. Now all I need to do is find Roundface and take her out. Then I have to touch the nuke and we win. He primed his hands and used his explosions to propel himself up the stairs. He thought back to how, during preschool he thought he was the best. Hisashi put a stop to that. Flashback. D-E-K-U. Where are you? A four-year-old Katsuki shouted. No response. Stop hiding you wimp. He screamed. It was in the afternoon and the nerd wasn't following him. He was supposed to praise him. D-E-K-U. He shouted, tiny pops going off. Now now, there's no reason for that. Katsuki turned and saw Deka's loser father. He only had a fire-breathing quirk. Hey! Dragon breath. Where's your shitty son? He shouted. Finger pointed at the man. Is that really the way you talk to your friends? Hisashi Midoriya asked. Deku's nothing to me. He's just a useless, quirkless fool playing at wanting to be a hero. That was the worst thing he could have said. Hisashi's face turned into a furious snarl. And then he had this presence. It was only for a microsecond, but Katsuki felt like death itself was glaring down upon him, ready to end his life. The man grabbed him by the shirt and hoisted him into the air, eye to eye with him. Let me go! Katsuki screamed, using his quirk. The man didn't flinch. I'll have you know that my brother was quirkless, the man said, his tone neutral. Bakugu saw right through it. The look promised pain. It promised an unholy demise. He wanted to be a hero, too. And do you know what happened? He got his wish, Hisashi's teeth were clenched. He became the world's greatest hero at the time. And then he died a hero. So, when you grind those without a quirk into the ground, most of me is begging you to continue, so I can make you live that nightmare, he snarled. And in that moment, Katsuki believed him. He believed that Izuku's dad could and would take his quirk away if he continued being a bully. Remember this talk, Katsuki, he spat the name like a curse. Because if this happens again, I won't give you another warning, he then proceeded to drop him to the ground. Now go apologize. Flashback end. Katsuki blew another hole in the wall. And then came that day, he thought. The day when Izuku showed what he could do. When he proved me wrong. He was just a late bloomer. And then, the very next day after that. Flashback. Did you hear? Deku doesn't have a quirk. The preschoolers were gathered around the nearly catatonic Izuku. Katsuki was further away, still terrified of what had happened the previous night. What? That's possible? Yeah, it's called being quirkless. That's so lame. He turned to his friend. Katsuki growled at the other preschoolers. You're wrong. I know it. He shouted. His teacher chuckled. I know you're trying to support your friend Katsuki but there's no reason to get his hopes up like that. After all, according to the medical records he has an extra toe joint. Chuckles erupted. His dad has one too and he breathes fire. Was his response. His teacher laughed. He's probably trying to make his son feel better. It's a wasted effort if you ask me. A few days later, he was leading his friends through the forest when he slipped on a log and fell into the river. And then Deku came there offering his hand. He really didn't want to take it, fearing that those awful tendrils would appear. And he was shaking, obviously afraid that they would as well. Keikachin? A are you alright? He asked. Now, Katsuki was tempted to slap the hand away but he remembered the warning Izuku's dad had told him. So he swallowed his pride and accepted it. Flashback end. It it was a damn good thing I did, he thought to himself. And then he turned a corner, feeling too happy in memory lane to explode the wall. 
And there it was. He saw the nuke. Yurarika was looking around as the explosions had ceased. He stepped out into the open. Hello Yuraraka. He coolly said. She immediately turned around and brought her hands into that release sign she did. He proceeded to lift his hand up and blow up the debris that she would have brought down on him. Meanwhile Izuku ducked from another kick from the now maniacally laughing Ida. He's really getting into the role. Izuku thought to himself, before activating his quirk again and running around another corner. You cannot run from me Izuku. My quirk is based on speed and stamina. You will tire, and you will be caught. BWA ha 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 ha. His actions were causing Izuku to sweat drop. Man this guy's acting like those villains from dad's old movies. He ran through the maze-like area. Kachin. How are things going? Not well. Came the response. Yurarika littered the floor with debris. Shit. Kachin, hold on. I'm coming. You won't be going anywhere. Ida shouted, sprinting around the corner. Izuku then proceeded to duck, only to get a faceful of Ida's boot. So what now, little hero? He sneered. D-E-K-U. I heard that through the radio. Kick his ass and get up here. But I might kill him. Izuku cried out. Then focus on the kicking of his ass, not the eating of his ass. That gave Ida pause. W what? He stammered. Izuku saw what was going on, so he dashed towards his friend, claws out. W what are those? Ida shouted, hands up to instinctively protect his face. Izuku then swiftly brought out the capture tape and wrapped it around Ida. You lose, he deadpanned to his friend before rushing off. In the monitor room, All Might almost had a heart attack. T that face. T that tone. I it's so similar to his face and tone. Izuku sprinted to the stairs, following the blasted walls. I don't have much time, he thought. Kachin, I'm coming. He shouted into the radio. Good. Was the response. Izuku coiled his legs and leapt through the stairwell, arriving at the scene. Yurarika paled at the sight of the claws. W what? T that's not part of your quirk. She shouted. Izuku rushed at her, eyes dead. T those eyes. And no way. Tashinori mentally screamed. Was there a connection? There had to be one. Yurarika dive rolled out of Izuku's way, the claws missing her by inches. Got it. And then she saw that Bakugu managed to grab the nuke. The hero team wins. All Might yelled over the radio. Chapter 6, as the two teams came out, Ida decided to catch up to Bakugu and Izuku. Eat my ass? Where did that come from? Katsuki shrugged. It's not my place to say. Don't worry, neither of us swing that way. After all, robots aren't sexy. Izuku snorted at that. A robot? Ida shouted. Izuku giggled aloud at his reaction. I am a flesh and blood human being. Ida shouted, waving his arms around. And yet you literally have two engines. Bakugu chucked. That's my quirk. He shouted. Relax man, I'm messing with you. The explosive teen said. All right. The MVP was none other than Katsuki Bakugu. That stunned everyone, said Boy included. What? Was all he could say. Would anyone like to guess why? Momo raised her hand. Yes? He asked. Well, Bakugu was the one who actually got the weapon, and he clearly followed through on his part of the plan. Sure Izuku came up with it but he also seemed to be the one to get Izuku to capture Ida with that line of his. The class laughed. I'm never gonna live that down, am I? Katsuki asked. Nope. The entire class shouted. Now then, let US move locations and choose the next team match. Shoto single-handedly swept the floor with his ice. He froze the entire building and casually tapped the nuke. 
the villain team's feet were frozen to the floor. Team C lost to Team H due to the fact that only one member of the team took it seriously. The other was. Well. Mineta. He was paired with the girl with the skimpiest outfit. What would you expect? The other teams did well, and soon it was over. Well done everyone. No one was injured, although young Bakugo may have made our ears bleed with his words. Everyone laughed while said boy screamed in rage. But now I must go. See you. And then he took off running. Wow. All Might's amazing. But I wonder why he was leaving so quickly? Izuku was pretty sure it was because of the time limit, but he didn't say anything. The rest of the afternoon classes went well. Izuku briefly wondered what would have happened if he used one for all but decided it wasn't good to dwell on it. At best he'd have a broken arm. At worst he would have killed Ida. He went home with them, and they all laughed at what Bakugo said, Katsuki included. Izuka thought that they were expecting him to go off. He knew that Kachin could keep his temper in, but it was hard. The school was surrounded by reporters the next day. Izuku just stared in shock. What's All Might like as a teacher? One lady asked. How are his classes? What does he teach? These questions were asked to everyone the reporters could get to. Hey aren't you the boy the sludge villain captured? One of them asked Bakugu. Fuck off. He snarled. And finally Aizawa came out. Air. What's All Might like as a teacher? The main reporter asked. Wow you're really scruffy. What's your deal? All Might is not on duty today. He droned. You are disturbing the classes. Please leave. He waved his hand at her in a shooing way. He then turned around, ignoring the reporters. How in the world did All Might work as a hero with these reporters? Was it his tour in the American Republic? Hey! At least let us see All Might. The nosy reporter demanded. Wait! No! Stop! Another reporter shouted. And then a deep alarm went off and steel barricades went up around the school, making the nosy reporter scream and fall back. It's the UA barrier. The what? The nosy reporter asked, still furious at her humiliation. That's what we call it. Anyone without a student pass or an ID who's trying to get there causes it to rise. That's stupid. We're the press. We deserve to get in. She snootily said. Yeah. We've been here for two days. Another reporter shouted. Aizawa walked into homeroom. Good job on your first combat training. I saw the results in video form. I must say, you surprised me Bakugu. Hey. I got first place in the entrance exam. It's only natural I got MVP. He bragged. No, I meant what you said to your teammate. Laughter erupted. Shut the fuck up. The blonde teen screeched, explosions going off on his palms. And Midoriya, I see that you decided breaking an arm wasn't healthy. Although your quirk is a strength enhancer. You grew claws. Care to explain? Aizawa asked. And my quirk had that but I didn't know it. I couldn't grow claws you until about 10 months ago. Does his quirk grow stronger the more people he kills? If so thank god he wants to be like All Might Katsuki thought to himself. Sorry about that. Now, let's get onto homeroom business. I'll have you all, he paused. Are we taking another surprise test, the entire class thought to themselves. Choose a class representative. It's an actually normal thing, the entire class thought, obviously relieved. And then came the constant screams of people wanting to be the one to lead the class. In a normal class, no one would want the extra work. Here, however, the person chosen gets to practice their leadership skills, which are essential for pro heroes, Izuka thought to himself, ignoring Mineta promising that under his rule girls would have to show 30 centimeters of thigh. Silence please. Ida shouted. Everyone turned to look at him. 
It is a serious responsibility to hold this position. It isn't a job for anyone who wants to do it. It is a calling that requires the trust of those around you. If we want to use democracy to choose, then we shall hold an election to choose one. We haven't even known each other for that long. Su Yu said. If that's the case everyone will just vote for themselves. Kirishima added on. Hence the voting. If someone gets more votes then they're obviously suited. What do you think Sensei? Everyone turned to Aizawa and saw that he was already in his sleeping bag. I don't care, so long as it's done before the end of homeroom. He said in his usual monotone. And the results were. I got first. Izuku screamed. All right Deku. But Kogu shouted, laughing. Did you vote for him? Kyoka asked. Hell yeah I did. Deka's a fucking genius and he knows how to be charismatic. T thanks Kachin. Izuku said, still nervous. All right, Izuku is the class representative, and the deputy class representative will be Momo. Aizawa tiredly stated, before retracting behind his desk. At lunch, Izuku was still panicking. I, I don't think I'm worthy of the job. I don't think I'm qualified. Ida then spoke up. Your courage and good judgment at critical moments makes others want to follow you. Th thanks Ida. Izuku replied, flustered at the compliment. It's why I voted for you. He said. Why you were one of the people who voted for me. But Ida, I thought you wanted the job. Yuraraka responded. There's a difference between wanting the job and being suitable for it. He replied. You know, you talk like a rich person. Are you rich? Yuraraka asked. Ida sighed. I tried changing my way of talking to avoid that. Fine. Yes, my family is rich. We've been heroes for generations. I'm the younger brother. Do you know the Turbo Hero Ingenium? Of course. Izuku replied almost immediately. He's a really popular hero with 65 sidekicks. S65? Yuraraka sputtered. Wait. Is he? Izuku began. He is my older brother. Ida said, standing up. He is a likable hero who follows the rules and sets an example. He sat down. I set my sights on being a hero so I could be like my brother. However, I'm not ready to lead just yet. Midoriya, meanwhile, realized the hidden meaning of the practical exam, so he's clearly a better leader. I already said I didn't know. Izuku muttered. You know, I think this is the first time I've seen you smile Ida. Yuraraka said. What? I smile. Ida replied. So Ingenium is Ida's role model, like All Might is mine. Izuku thought to himself. League of Villains base. All for one suddenly clutched his chest. Sensei. Kuroguri shouted. I, I am fine. Why did it feel like I just got punched in the heart, he thought to himself. UA cafeteria. And then an alarm blared. What? Izuku shouted. A level 3 alert has been issued. All students, please evacuate outdoors. An automated voice declared. What's a level 3 alert? Ida asked the boy sitting next to him. It means someone is trespassing on school grounds. The boy replied. I've been here for three years and I've never seen anything like it. The hallways were so crowded that everyone was pushed against each other. W Watts with all the people. Yuraraka shouted. As expected of the students of the Best Hero High School, everyone is quickly reacting to a crisis. Ida shouted. Izuku felt all of the warm bodies around him and once again forced the rising tendrils down. T they're reacting so quickly it's causing a panic. He shouted. And then he was pushed down. Daku. Yuraraka screamed. Ida then shoved himself to the window. Who in the world dared to trespass? He shouted, looking down. And then he saw it. 
The press? Give us all might. The pushy reporter lady screeched. Izala and Mike were by the front doors. We already told you that he's not here today. Mike responded. If you'll give us one comment we'll leave. Another reporter shouted. If you people get one comment, you'll demand another. That's how you media types are, Aizawa said. Hands raised. Mike then leaned towards Aizawa. They're illegally trespassing. Do you think we can get away while calling them villains and then beating them up? He whispered. Don't do that, Mike. They'll write a bunch of half-truths or outright lies for daring to not submit to their every desire. He deadpanned. Let's just wait for the police. I thought we were under attack but it's just the press, Ida thought to himself. Everyone. It's just the pre and then someone elbowed him, knocking him down. Did someone fall? A random student yelled. That caused even more panic. Where are the teachers? Ida thought to himself. Are they just trying to keep the press out? Everyone. Slow down. Slow duak. Kirishima and Kaminari, he thought to himself. Watching them try to calm the students down only to be swept away by the tide of bodies. Ida. Yurarika shouted, being pushed away from him. Think. What would Midoriya or my brother do? That's it. He then pushed his way through the crowd. Yuraraka. Make me float. He shouted. She reached out and just barely managed to touch him. And sure enough, he was floating. Now to get to everyone's line of sight. He then pushed his engines out of his legs and started them. Of course, being in zero gravity, he started cartwheeling towards the front. Ida. Izuku shouted. Ida then crashed into the wall. All right. Be concise, clear, and bold, he thought to himself. He then grabbed the bar above him. Everyone. He shouted, getting the attention of. Well. Everyone. It's just the press. This is UA. Let's act in a way that is benefiting to the best of the best. And then the shoving stopped. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief, and then noticed that his shirt had an indent in it. He almost panicked before reabsorbing the tendril. That was way to close, he thought to himself. Back at 1A, Izuku was about to give a speech. Come on class rep, show us what you're made of. Momo encouraged. W well it's time to appoint other positions, but first see can I say something? He asked. I, I think that Ida should be the class representative. Everyone looked up at that. He was able to get everyone's attention today. Therefore, I think it's best that he be the one representing us. And soon the class was agreeing on it. I don't care what you do, Izuku eeped at the sound of his teacher back in his sleeping bag talking. Just finished it up quickly. He then fell back asleep. Ida then stood up. If the class representative has nominated me, then it can't be helped. From this day forward, I, Tenya Ida promised to carry out my duties as class representative to the best of my abilities. What about me? Momo asked. After school was out, midnight, recovery girl, 13, and Nizu went to the front gate, only to find it utterly destroyed. The press wouldn't be able to do this. Nizu said. There had to be an instigator. Did a villain slip in, or was it a declaration of war? Meanwhile, Emilady, Kamui Woods, and another hero were in a standoff with a villain holding a family hostage. Missouri. Smash. And then All Might appeared. He backhanded the villain, I was on my way to work, but I can't ignore any screams for help. Ah. I hit and run. Someone shouted. I will be going now. With that he took to the air in a mighty leap. I'm going slower. Is it because I gave one for all to young Midoriya? And after I pushed myself that day, my time has begun to decrease. Even if he's a suitable vessel, he's only 15. And he looks way too much like him to have it be a coincidence. But that's what his has to be. 
Today's hero class will be taught by three teachers, All Might, myself and another hero. Another? Izuku thought to himself. What will we be doing? Siro asked. Rescue missions. From shipwrecks, natural disasters and everything in between. Rescue missions, huh? This sounds even more difficult. Kaminari stated, obviously excited for the challenge. Hey! This is serious. Karishima stated. No one's better than me in the water, Ribbit. Suyu added. I'm not done yet. Aizawa said. Everyone turned to him again. You can decide whether or not you want to bring your costumes. He pressed a button on a remote and the costume holders appeared. Also, this takes place off campus so we'll be taking the bus for this. He then got up. Rescue training. This is the part one admired. This is a huge step in becoming a hero. Izuka thought to himself, fighting the urge to remind himself why surrounding himself with weak and or injured people was a very bad idea. The class was soon dressed and ready. Hey Deku, why are you in your gym clothes? Yuraraka asked. My costume is being updated. You see, my dad told me that I should be my own hero, instead of an All Might clone. Bakugu, who was right behind them, nodded. You need to do your own thing Deku, or you're just gonna be All Might 2.0. He laughed. And then Ida blew a whistle he found from. Somewhere. All right students of 1A, gather around. Form two lines based on your student number. So that loading onto the bus goes smoothly. Ida's going full throttle, Izuku said while sweat dropping. As it turned out, it was more like a public bus than a school bus. I didn't think it was this type of bus. Ida shouted. So there was no point to all of that. Mina said. I just say whatever comes to mind Suyu said. Midoriya? Why yes Ajui? He was rather startled by the fact someone was talking to him. Call me Tsu she said. All right. He mumbled. Your quirk is a lot like All Might's. Ha! Huh? He cried, trying to get them to not make the connection. Be but I I am ah. Uh. He wasn't really getting any traction. Hold up Tsu. All Might doesn't get claws with his quirk. Kareshima admonished. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief. He also thought that he might need to train one for all some more. After all, his fingers healed quickly, so he practiced on that. Hey, it's cool that you have such a flashy quirk. My quirk, hardening, is super useful but it doesn't look like much. I think it's a great quirk. It's definitely pro level. Izuku replied. But a hero has to deal with popularity as well. Kirishima countered. My naval laser is pro level in both flashiness and strength. Yuga said. But it's not great that it gives you a stomachache, Mina deadpanned. But if you're talking about flashy or strong, then you have to look at Bakugu or Todoroki. Kirishima finished. Bakugu's always mad though, so it's not like he'll ever be popular. Suyu said. Hey! You wanna fight? Said boy screamed, proving the point. See? We haven't even known each other for long, so it's amazing that everyone knows his personality is like crap seeped in sewage. Kaminari stated. I'll kill you. The explosive blonde yelled, again proving the point. How is this possible? Kachin's the one who's being teased? Izuku thought to himself. First the mocking of eat his ass and now this? What a vulgar conversation, Momo said to Yurarika. But I like this kind of stuff. Yurarika replied. Alight, we're here. Stop fooling around. Aizawa said. Everyone, I have been waiting for you. The whole class collectively inhaled. It's 13, the space hero. The gentlemanly hero who has saved tons of people from disasters. Izuku fanboyed. I love 13. Yuraraka squealed. Bah! I bet you don't even know their gender. Ida scoffed. That was a tricky question. 
No one had ever seen 13 out of their suit. Except for. 13 is a girl. Izuku shouted. How did you know that? 13 asked. Your voice for one. It's feminine. Also you're not denying that it is. Also also when I saw you save a bunch of people once you mentioned getting a new suit to accommodate your hips, and you were in a man's suit. Therefore, since women tend to have larger hips for giving birth, I assumed you are a woman. There was stunned silence. And then 13 laughed. You're correct. I am a girl. She said. Now let's get inside without further delay. We all look forward to working with you. The class shouted. Everyone gasped when they got in. There are many zones here. There's a shipwreck, a landslide, a fire, a windstorm and more. 13 declared. I made this training ground to accommodate for various types of natural disasters. It's called the Unforeseen Simulation Joint, or USJ for short. She finished. 13, where's All Might? Aizawa asked, he was supposed to meet us here. Well, it looks like he did too much hero work and ran out of time. So he's in the lounge, she whispered, holding up three fingers. Aizawa then called All Might. I'm sorry. I should have a little bit of energy for the end though. Well that's irrational. Aizawa said. Good thing we took precautions just in case, he thought to himself. It can't be helped. Shall we begin? Air, before we begin. Let me say a few things. 13 said. I am sure you are all aware of my quirk, black hole. I can suck up anything and turn it to dust. In fact, she's probably a black hole herself, save for the fact she can turn back to normal, Azuka thought. I think that's the case because she can take off her suit, as this one is different than the one she used to wear. But if that's the case then she says she's a girl because she can turn back into her human form. Air, how did you know all of that? 13 asked, slightly worried. Ha! Huh? Did I say that out loud? Izuku asked. Yep. Aizawa said. Well, you've managed to use your quirk to save people from all kinds of disasters right? Yes, but my quirk can easily kill people. Some of you also have quirks like that right? Izuku tried not to turn pale. In this superhuman society, quirks are closely regulated and certified, keeping anarchy at bay. Unless you live in America. However, even their quirks are registered. It's not the anarchy-filled hellhole the media portrays it as. Izuku nodded. His father had often said that Japan should continue to follow America's example. They had the no quirks in public type of law for about 25 years. After that it was phased out as society had stabilized. Now you could easily get a license to use your quirk. You didn't have to be a hero for it. But I digress. 13 said. There are many quirks that can kill with one misstep. With Aizawa's physical test you found out the physical limits of your quirks. With All Might's personal training, you found out how dangerous your powers are to others. They know nothing of how dangerous my quirk is, Izuku thought to himself. This class is a fresh start. You'll learn how to use your quirks to save people's lives. Your powers are not so you can harm others. I hope you leave here knowing your powers are meant to help others. As one of my dad's old superhero comics said. With great power comes great responsibility. It was a rather interesting one as well, Izuku thought. That is all. Thank you for listening. She finished. Bravo. Bravo. The class cheered. All right then, first but then Aizawa was cut off by the power being cut. And then some sort of portal opened by the fountain. The portal formed a face, and then a figure appeared. It had hands in its face. Everyone. Gather together and don't move. Aizawa ordered in a tone none of the students had ever heard before. 13. Protect the students. What's that? Kashima asked. That was a man with a hand on his face. And then came more people. Is this like the entrance exam? Don't move. 
their teacher instructed while putting on his goggles. Those are villains.